Well, okay. So now I want to talk about standard deviation. And the way we're going to approach it is with an example. One of the things that I dislike in life is waiting in line. And you know when you go to the grocery store or the gas station, you're kind of on your own to choose which line to go to. And invariably, I choose the wrong line. It might look like there's only two people in that line, but I get it, and 20 minutes later, I'm still staying there, and meanwhile, the line right next to me is flying right through, okay? So, we did, and this was uh, not done by me, but there was a little survey done at three grocery stores. And so, let's look at the wait times at three stores, okay? And maybe a functioning marker would be nice at this point. Okay, so the first wait time was actually, and we're gonna go, uh, and we measured uh, four customers. Okay, so store number one. What's kind of cool here, six minutes, six minutes, six minutes, six minutes. All the wait times were the same, right? They had uh, people doing this efficiently. They didn't pick your line, you stood in a line and then you were told where to go at the grocery store, all right? The next store, you had to kind of guess your line. And these were like three, 10, five and six. Is that how many items each person has? No, that's how long they had to wait in line. Oh, okay. So these are the wait times at three stores. Okay. Or let me, I suppose we get just the wait time at, the, at one store. Right? Why don't we just say that? We don't say three stores. We just say one store. And basically what the grocery store did was they were experimenting with different ways. Let's do this. They're experimenting with different ways to get customers through the line quicker. Okay. So first person, person number one. And this was the time in minutes. Wait, how is it one person if it's... They went through the line four times. I mean, well... Yeah, four customers, sorry. You're right. You're right. Four customers each day. Day one. Day two. How's that? Is that better? Day three. Uh, one customer went through really fast. Uh, one took a long time. One went through in four. And the last one again took six. And then on day four, they tried something new at the store. They, uh, they had some people go to the self-check and they had, I don't know, around here, ever since the pandemic started, they've had someone standing there shuffling you off to the grocery store. And these people went through really quick. One got through in one minute, one got through in five minutes, but one took 15 minutes and one took three minutes. Okay. So let's try to think about that data a little bit. Let's calculate the mean. Symbol we use for mean will be X bar. So the time in minutes, we'll call that X and X bar. So the data typically is referred to as X. And then the mean, you see that X bar. Go ahead and, and calculate that mean for me, for those four people. And tell me, see if you notice what happens. I'll bet you can do the mean on day one right? What's the average wait time on day one? 
Six minutes. Six, because they're all the same. How about the average wait time on day two? Six. Six. Obviously, you can tell I've contrived these. Average wait time on day three. Six. Yes. And you want to take a wild guess what the average wait time on day four is going to be? Six. All of those times have the same mean. But clearly, the data is not the same, right? And if you were asked to describe the difference in the data, you might say, well, they differ in their distance from the mean. And you'd be correct. Is there a way to measure how spread out the data is from the mean? Don't answer that, that's a rhetorical question. Of course there is, right? And this is what we're gonna use, call the standard deviation. It's basically the average distance from the mean, okay? the average distance from the mean. Now, if you notice, some of the values are above the mean, some of the values are below the mean. There's a few things about the standard deviation. One, it is always positive. Because I'm talking about the distance from the mean. Okay, distance from the mean. Two, We've got a 10, a 12, and a 15. What do you think they do to the average deviation of the mean for that data set? Right? They're going to increase it. So they're greatly influenced by what did we call those things? The 15, 12, and the 10. They're called outliers. outliers. You know, data points that are way above or way below the middle. Okay. Well, big question then. How do we calculate this? This measurement exists. There is a way to measure the deviations from the mean. No deviation here. Much more spread out here. Is there a way to, to talk about that other than just using you know, uh, words? And of course the answer is yes. And this is how it goes. Think about, first of all, how do you measure the distance between two numbers? Like if I said uh, the distance between seven and 12, what mathematical operation would you subtract you like one from the other from the difference, yeah. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take X minus X bar. Now, problem with this, as I said earlier, is you have some above, some below. And in fact, if you do this for every one of the points, you're going to come up with a zero. That's kind of the definition of the average. If you take an entire data set and subtract the average from each point and then add those values up, some positive, some negative, some positive, some negative, you're going to end up with zero. We could do the absolute value. Well, what would be another way to make this difference positive besides the absolute value? Square it. Square it. And we're going to do that for each data point, and then we're going to find the average. What do we do to find the average? We add up the values, right, and divide by. So I'm going to take the sum of all of those, and I'm going to divide by, now normally the average we divide by n. This time I'm going to divide by n minus 1. Now, why n minus 1? This is the central question in sometimes with, with students who see this notation. 
isn't don't you divide by n when you do the average? And the answer is yes. But this time, because this is a sample, right, we want to overestimate the deviation. If you think about it, if you divide by n, or if you divide by a number smaller than n, the overall value here will be larger when you divide by a number smaller. And that's because these are only four customers, or four days, right? Four customers per day. That's a sample of the grocery stores. There's an entire population of grocery stores in the world that we're not going to talk about. We're just taking this sample. So because we're taking a sample, we want to err on the side of, of overestimating because we're, we don't, we're not using the entire population. And you'll talk a lot more about this in chapter seven. And then we're going to take the square root. And this is going to equal s. Little s is our variable for standard deviation. So standard deviation, we're going to call this little s. And that's how this works. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do that for each of these points. But let's just make sure that we understand the background for standard deviation. So that makes sense now. Let's review. We're going to take our data set. We find the average. Everybody knows how to do that. But then we're interested in, in how spread out they are. I mean, I can tell you the average grade in my class is an 84 and the average grade in Mr. Doucette's class is an 84. But does that mean that kids did the same in each class? I mean, one class could have kids from 83 to 85, 86, 82. And the other class could be like 95 to 75. We still get the same average. And the way we note the difference is with the standard deviation, the average distance from the mean. And that's our formula. So why don't we calculate it here? We can do this. OK? So uh, I'm just going to cover this formula up. So you've got that, and let's go here. Let's calculate the standard deviation for day one. S sub one. All right, so I'm just going to uh, pull that over, and let's calculate that difference for S sub one. So there's our sixes, and we can see that uh, the, we know the average is six, so we're going to take well, we, we don't even really need to calculate this. What's the standard deviation for S sub 1? It's got to be 0, right? There is no deviation. How about S sub 2, day 2? OK, we're going to take the first data point, 3 minus 6 squared plus 10 minus 6 squared. 5 minus 6 squared plus 6 minus 6 squared. Divide that not by 4, but by 4 minus 1, 3. And then take the square root of that answer. So I think we can just do this, right? Negative 3 squared, so that's 9 plus 16 plus 1 plus 0, enter, divide that by 3, enter, and take the square root of that answer. And you can confirm this, you know, on your own. You should, please confirm this on your own. This okay. comes up to 2.94. And so what is that saying? That essentially says that on day two, we had an average of six for the four shoppers. But each of those four shoppers had an average of 2.94 minutes away from six. And that's actually a helpful designation. Why do we divide that? That's the three. How'd you get three? Three? Because yeah. remember, our formula here now is going to be n minus one. 
Okay. And so our N here, one, two, three, four data points. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, and I can write that, I could. Okay, all right, let's do uh, S sub three. Okay, so. All right, now we come over here and we say, okay, two minus six, see if you can kind of do it, stay, see if you can stay like one step ahead of me as I write this out, right? Uh, pause the video or I'll do a dramatic pause. See if you can get one step ahead of me as I do this. Okay, 12 minus six, four minus six, six minus six. Again, four data points, so we divide by three, take the square root. Should be pretty similar because 3, 10, 5, 6, 2, 12, 4, 6 looks kind of about the same. Maybe day three is a little bit more spread out. Let's see how that works. So I'm going to have 16 plus 36 plus 4 plus 0. I'm going to divide that by 3, and then we're going to take the square root. And sure enough, you're right, it is a little bit more spread out, 4.32. So again, let's now use our words. Day 3 had an average of 6, but for each of the four values, the, those values averaged 4.32 minutes away from six. And finally, S sub four. Again, see if you can stay one step ahead as I go through this. And I'll, and I'll pause, I'll let you guys kind of work and you can just listen for a minute. Again, what does this mean? We had an average of six. 2.94 means each of those values had an average of 2.94 minutes away from six. Average of 4.32. Each of those values had an average of 4.32 minutes away from six. Average of zero standard deviation means each of those four values had zero deviation. All right, so here we go. One minus six squared. Five minus six squared. 15 minus six squared. Three minus six squared. Divide that by three. Take the square root. And let's see how this works. 1 minus 6 is negative 5. Square that, you're at 25. Okay? Plus 1. Plus 50, not 81. Plus 9. Yeah, we're much larger here. We're going to divide that by 3 and take the square root of that answer, 6.22. So in this case, we had an average of six, but the average deviation was six. So these were really spread out. And this is the idea behind standard deviation. Okay, this is the idea behind standard deviation. You're gonna take each of your data points, subtract the mean, that's X minus X bar. You're gonna square it. The sigma out here means sum, and then add up all those x's, and divide by n minus one. Now, how many x's are there? Well, x goes from, let's call this x sub i, and i goes from one to n, right? So you've got n x's. So n is the number of items in your data set, so n, is the number 
of items in the data. S is your standard deviation. X is the actual value of the item. We call this X sub I sometimes. And then X bar is the mean. And that's how this works. Okay? Now, standard deviation uses the mean. There are other measures of center. Median. We have our quartiles. We have our interquartile range. Those do not, those are not, those values are not used in the calculation of the standard deviation. For our purposes in introductory statistics, we're going to use the mean. We're going to use this formula. So let's get a little box around this formula here because that is your standard deviation formula. Distance from the mean. Okay? And so now we have some tools to analyze data. Now we're ready to do some applications and look at some problems. 